Previously, we wrote an input-output program in C++. In the input-output program, we asked for the name, height, and the width of rectangle from the user. Then, we return back the area of the rectangle. In this video, we'll learn about controlled statements in C++. We'll also use the selection controlled statement to ask for different things depending on if user wants an area of a rectangle or a triangle. Welcome to Code Station. All the programs could be written in terms of only three controlled structures, sequence structures, selection structures, and repetition structures. The programs that we've written thus far all have used the sequence structure. This just means that the statements that we've written executed one after the other, in the order that they were written, that is, in the sequence. In this code, in the main function, we first declared the height. Then, we declared the width and a string variable called name. Then, we printed out the message. After that, we inputted the name, height, and the width. The program therefore ran sequentially. It didn't first ask for the user input before displaying the message from line 12 that explained what the user input was all about. Imagine having the program stuck for the user without them knowing that it was actually just waiting for their inputs. A block is a sequence of statements enclosed in curly braces. We have used a block statements within our main function before, just like in this example here. There could be multiple blocks stacked along each other or nested block, that is one block inside another. In this example, block 1 and block 2 are nested inside block 3. Note that there are many declaration of integer variable x in this program. Something to keep in mind is the scope of each of these variables. The scope of an object is the part of the program where the object may be used. Here, first, x is declared in the scope of block 3 and assigned the value of 10. Then, a new block starts, that is block 1. In this block, another x is declared with the value of 20. Inside this block, the value of x is 20. Therefore, the cout statement at line 10 outputs 20. Then, we go outside of block 1. At this block, the value of x is 10. Therefore, the cout statement at line 13 prints 10. Now, we move on to block 2. Here, x is initialized as 5. Therefore, the value of x is 5 in this block. The cout statement at line 17 prints 5. Finally, we get back to block 3, where the cout statement prints out 10 again. This is an example where we have several blocks of statements in our code, and we go through all of these blocks sequentially. However, it is also possible to skip some of these blocks as required in our code using the selection structures. The if statement either selects and performs a block of statements if the condition is true, or skips the statements if the condition is false. This is a single selection statement. In this example, since the boolean variable print x is true, the block gets executed. Therefore, the value of x 20 is printed. Conversely, in this case, print x is false. Therefore, the block is not executed. The boolean value of false corresponds to an integer value of 0. Therefore, the conditions that have a non-zero value x is true, and the conditions that have a 0 x is false. Here, if 0 x as a if false. Therefore, the block below it is not executed. X is not printed out. On the other hand, here, if minus 1 acts as a if true. Therefore, the block below it is executed. The value of x is printed out. It is worthwhile to mention that the if statements are one of the most practical places that the comparison or logical operators are used. In this example, we print out x only if it is equal to 20. We are using the equality operator, the double equal to sign. Similarly, in this case, we only print x if x is less than or equal to 20. The block is not executed if x is greater than 20. Get it? This is also an avenue where a lot of programmers confuse the equality operator with the assignment operator. Look at this example. The code at the left hand side has the equality operator, so it is comparing the value of x with 20. The right hand side has an assignment operator where we are assigning the value of 20 to x. 
So, while the code at the left runs the block only if x is equal to 20, the code at the right first assigns the value of 20 to x. If the assignment is successful, this statement returns a true. Since the assignment is always successful, the code block below this if statement always runs. Thus, it is imperative to understand what you want to do. Do you really want to use an assignment operator, single equal to sign, or do you want to use the equality operator instead? The if else statement is a double selection statement because it selects between two different blocks. If the condition is true, it selects the first block. If the condition is false, it selects the second block. In this example, if the value of x is less than 20, it selects the first block and prints x is less than 20. Otherwise, it prints out x is greater than 20. It is important to note that if x is greater than or equal to 20, the first block will not be executed at all. Conversely, if x is smaller than 20, the second block will not be executed at all. We can also have multiple selection statement using the if else if else statements. If the condition 1 in the if statement is true, statement block 1 is executed. Otherwise, if the condition 2 in the else if statement is true, the statement block 2 is executed. You could also have other conditions with other else if statements. If none of these conditions are true, the code just goes ahead and executes the statements in the else block. Note that if one of these conditions are true, it will not execute any of the other conditions and blocks after it. For example, in this code, if x is 10, which is less than 20, the first if block prints out x is less than 20, but it will not execute any else if conditions. Therefore, it will not print x is less than 50 or x is less than 100, even if they are theoretically true. Thus, the if else if else statements make the code execute only one block among the multiple blocks. In the upcoming videos, we will also look into another way of using multiple selection statement using the switch statement. Similarly, we will look into loops in an upcoming video regarding repetition structures. In this video, we will now go back to our input output code and use what we have learned so far. Okay, so what do we have in here? This code asks for the height and the width of the rectangle from the user and prints out the area of the rectangle. But what if the user wants to get the area of a triangle instead? What if the user wants the area of a square or a circle? Could the same program handle it? Well, yes. Let's use the if else statements in the solution. First, let's have an interface for the user to select what area they are looking for. Let's simply see out the messages. Notice that we're using the backslash n instead of endl. Essentially, they do the same thing, end of line. Now, let's declare an integer which could very well be an unsigned int to store the user selection. Let's get the selection from the user. Perhaps it would be nice to ask the user what we are expecting, integer number 1 to 4. Now, we have the selection. Depending on what the selection is, we need to do different things. Let's first declare the variables to store the area. Then, we have the if conditions. If the selection is equal to 1, we have the block of statements related to rectangles area calculation. Let's fill that later. Next structure, else if selection is equal to 2. Then, if the selection is equal to 3. And then, if it's equal to 4. Finally, let's have a else condition if the selection was something else that is not within our required range of 1 to 4. In this case, we can just output that the selection was invalid. We don't need to do anything here. Now, we already have an implementation for calculating the area of a rectangle. Let's just copy it and paste it in this first block. Let's format it properly. We don't need to redeclare the area variable here. We've already declared it earlier. So let's just calculate the area. The next condition is selection equal to 2, which is for a square. For a square, we just need to ask for one side's information. 
the area of the square is calculated appropriately, that is square of the length. We then move on to the triangle. Similar to the rectangle, we ask for the height and the width of the triangle. Then, the area would be one half height times width. Then, to the next case, that is circle. Let's ask for the radius of the circle. Area of the circle is pi times the square of the radius. Let's define pi as 3.1415. This way, we are done populating all the if, else if, and else blocks. Finally, let's output the area. Of course, this is not the area of just the rectangle. It is just the area of any shape that the user desired for. So, this is our code. We started with a message to the user to input what shape they wanted the area of. Then, the if, else if, else blocks to calculate the area of required shape. Then, the final output that the code needs to have, that is the area. Let's build and run this code. Oops, there is an error. Let's look at the build message. Ah, we missed a semicolon, another common error that programmers make. Now, it should build and run fine. There, our message for the user to select the type of the shape. Let's go ahead and select a rectangle. Hmm, we do get the next message to enter the height of the rectangle and the width. And we finally get the area of the rectangle. Let's run it again. This time, let's select a square. See, we get a different message now. Length of the square. We don't get asked for the width and get the area of the square right away. Similarly, for the triangle, we run the triangle block of code. For the circle, we run the circle block of code. If our selection was outside of the acceptable range of 1 to 4, we would get the error message incorrect selection. However, currently, we also get the area is message with a random number. This is undesired. Let's fix it. Simply, let's go to the else statement and after printing out the incorrect selection message, let's simply return a 0. This will exit the main function right here. Now, we get the error message and exit our code right away. We don't get any unnecessary output. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. We still have to go through the repetition structures which involves loops. Essentially, loops make the block run again and again until a certain condition is fulfilled. Please subscribe to this channel to learn more. Thank you for watching.